From the Green Room Studios at Bates Nursery in Nashville, Tennessee, it's Gardening Inside Out, a podcast with highlights from our Saturday morning live show, answering all your gardening questions, giving you plant advice for any space in your life. Let's start the show. Happy New Year, everyone. It's Caroline Gant. Hey, it is the new year. Hi, I'm Austin. 2024 has opened the door. It's mm. Tyler Blankenship. What's Tyler's up? puns. There's, nice. there's one. He's the best. Mm-hmm. He's the best at that. <laughs> uh-huh. So anyway, are we all alive from after the New Year's? I'm kind of still dead. You're kind of still dead. Kind of still dead. I'm, I'm doing good. Okay. Yeah. Tyler? I had one of those like productivity energy boosts. And I was like, I'm going to get a bunch of stuff done. I actually did. Mm. And then today I'm paying for it with a headache. Mm. Yeah, when I get stuff done, I get a headache. Mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. Don't, I, I, don't get, I don't get a headache mm. for getting stuff done. <laughs> well, I don't know why, but the second is not, has not been good for me. <laughs> well, well, we but are I all hope. back to work. Yes. All the festivities are done, mm-hmm. although I'm kind of glad they're done. Oh, I'm glad Oof. the holidays are over. Wore me out. It has its own that. ups and downs, for it sure. It does. New Year's Eve was nice. I told y'all earlier already, but I stayed up till midnight with my daughter, and it was great. I had a very fun night. She's never stayed up that late, so. Never? Nope. She's never stayed up that late. Not till midnight. She's only seven. Oh, yeah. But that's a big thing. She's going to remember it forever. I hope so, because it was a big thing. It was great. There's no way she's going to forget that. Nah. 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 Yeah. Anyway, do we have... You know what I thought we should talk about? Do we have any New Year's resolutions plant-related? Not life-related, because we know that'll never happen. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Mine's always do better with plants, (laughs) as far as spending all my money on them. That's a good one for you. Keeping it in check. (laughs) You spend a lot of money here. (laughs) I do spend a lot of, so much money here. Restraint is not in your plant vocabulary. It's not in my plant Mm. vocabulary, but I did get really good last year at planting stuff not as soon as I brought it home, but within the week, getting it in ground. That is literally my plant res- resolution. It feels good to do it. I always will buy a plant or two or three, whatever. I'll bring them home and they'll sit in the side yard in their pot for like two months before I plant them. I would say it's more like two years with you. Sometimes it is. When I go to your house, you have a whole line of plants. <laughs> this, I feel like nursery this is pots on your driveway. Every nurseryman's dirty secret. Yeah. It kind of is. Yeah. That you just. You're lazy about stuff. planting stuff. I don't know why. People that don't plant stuff all the time are like, they're like, oh, I want to get my tree, get it home, get it in the ground. And I'm just like, ah, I really want this tree. And then I bring it home and I just sit it on the ground. But we're also, <laughs> we're not that afraid of a plant living in its pot. No, you know? you're right. That's we a good know, point. We know what a plant needs for us to just keep it alive barely while yeah. it, you know. They're know. tough. They're tougher than people give them credit for. I know, but it's like, for me, it's more annoying because I've got to water it in a pot way more than I would in the ground. Like, if I just get it in the ground, dude. Water it. And, like, for the most part, it's fine. You don't rely on nature like I do? Just I mean, I, uh, the occasional yeah, rainstorm. <laughs> how many plants do drink. you have unplanted right now? Unplanted right now? Oh, how many trees? Just trees? Just trees. Just trees. Just trees. Only... Three? Okay. That's pretty good for me. I have one. Mm, I have two unplanted trees. I've got two. Yeah. yeah. It happens. And a couple shrubs. What kind of shrubs? It's that cherry that my mom got me for my birthday. The little yuzu. Is that what it is? No, that's yeah, not. She... Oh, no, 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 no. It's the flowering almond. It's not yeah. a cherry. Oh, yeah. That's right. Flowering almond. I got that one. That's a cool plant. Yep. Kind of. And I got some kind of cherry tree that I bought <laughs> last fall. Don't you get sassy about my plants and a magnolia. I'm not. They're cool I'm when they bloom. They're cool when they bloom, but other than that, I'm just like, mm. my but mom it's will okay. come through this podcast and slap you for <laughs> No, you're right. That was a I great gift. That. Anytime people gift, send plant gifts. There's nothing better. It nothing better. There really isn't. It's plants still. and plant gift cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, getting plant gifts. Whether it's like my birthday or whatever occasion is really sweet, you know, <laughs> very sweet. Uh-huh. Especially when you know people who know what kind of plants you like mm-hmm. or what's been on your mind or your list. Which is why working here on your birthday is always the best. <laughs> I remember my first birthday here, I got so many plants, and I'd only been working here for like a month or two, and I was just like, oh, I found my people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and 
it, for like my family or friends or whatever, like it's hard for them to buy me gifts because as y'all know, I'm a little bit of a, I'm a little bit picky You're bit about, of a about diva. my plants. A little a bit little diva-ish. I'm a, a little bit. I'm a, I'm a cart judger. That's a funny thing we talk about out here that nobody <laughs> really knows about. But whenever you're pushing your cart full up of plants and it's got a whole bunch on it, we're going we're gonna to have to say something about it. I'm going to look at it and be like, mm, Mainly Austin. Uh, it's cart. mostly Austin. So if, like, you're, mm. if you're shopping at Bates, I usually you're listening to this right now. Yeah. <laughs> I love seeing people's individual unique things that they picked out and... Tyler just said the same thing, but made it sound nicer. <laughs> am I well, pretty much? But am I am I a little optimist? Yes, I am. <laughs> but I'm like, that's such a nice little group of plants you got there. And then I'm yeah. just like, ugh, why? <laughs> yeah, that combo. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> but we all know but what no. you like, Austin. I know. But there's good carts out there too. Don't get me wrong. Whenever there is good carts, I'm the first one to tell a person that's the prettiest cart of the day. <laughs> yeah, I do true. that frequently in the spring, actually. Yeah. So if you get that from me, then you're doing good. I've never Just, gotten that from you. <laughs> never. Pro tip: never push a cart full of uh, Black Eyed Susan straight up to Austin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's gonna have something to say. Uh -huh. But you can bring him on over to me because I love Rudabecchia. Yeah. Would. Bring yeah, that, I know I would. <laughs> bring that wildflower field mm -hmm. forward. Oh, my wildflower field this spring is going to be, as Austin says, money. 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 Well, guys, I already messed up because I, I oh, wanted no. to sow crimson clover in my front yard. I have this big bag of seed, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, mess, I missed the window. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Save it for next year. Mm -hmm. oh, I guess I'm going to have to. You said, huh. Oh. Yeah. I guess uh, talking about resolutions or going back to that, mine would have to be a little more planning. I'd say a little more intention. Planning. Uh, oh, planning. Planning. No, okay, not planting. Planning. planning. <laughs> I mean, well, every gardener should plan. I, I hope that planting will happen. Mm -hmm. But I, I would really like to make some nice bigger beds, some fe really feature stuff. Because right now, mostly what I've done is put things in individual places mm -hmm. you know i'm like i got this plant because i like this plant mm -hmm. uniquely on its own and it's going right there i think yeah yeah <laughs> you know that's that's been the majority of the plan unless aside from like my like fruit production beds and stuff in mm -hmm. the main garden i talk about this often and it's a it's a very common thing that happens a lot it is exactly what you just talked about tyler it's people come out here and they'll get a cart and then they'll find 10 different plants that they like but they're all different so then, like, where you put those in a bed can be tricky. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, did this, the, when you design it, does it flow with each other? Does it work well together? Or is it just random single plants everywhere? So I understand where you're coming from from that. And then planning is certainly something we have to do. Because if not, you end up like Caroline and have to re-dig up a plant that she planted in a spot to put it somewhere else. Maybe and, I liked it in that spot first. Yeah. And then I decided I want to try something different. Uh -huh. Some people things up. have to be visual like that, though. But I'm just set it in a pot person. there. Doesn't work Don't that way. Don't dig a hole and put it in the ground. I like to see it through all the seasons and then move it. Um, mm, not for me. I ain't trying to move stuff. I know this you're is, not. I think this We're is more very, common. Austin very opposite you gardeners, mm -hmm. you and I. We are. We are. But My that's okay. We're covered. all different. That's right. And that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. That's why everything's so interesting. I do a lot of planning, Tyler. I'll give you that. Like, I think about it constantly. Like, if there's holes in the garden, what I want to put in there, what I choose or whatever, like, it takes me, it takes me a while to figure out where I want to To the point stuff. of indecision where you have a lot of plants in pots sitting around your house? <laughs> no, not necessarily that. Because the plants that I, that like, if I do it for a design standpoint, then I pick what I want and then I roll with it. And I mm -hmm. get it and I put it in my beds for, like, the front display design. Like, my side yard is my tree yard. It's like my ornamental tree yard or whatever. Yeah, you got, like, a tree field. Uh-huh. And I've been working on it for years now. And that is the plants, typically, that I don't plant all that quickly. Yeah. But if I pick a color of like annuals or something, you then I'm buying like the 20 of them fast. and they're getting in. Although I'm pretty sure yeah. you left a flat of pansies in the back of your truck and they died a couple of years back. That sounds like it could be me. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? We've all been there, right? Oh, definitely. You know how many plants I've killed on my driveway, which is at the end of the year last year, I started putting them in the ground as soon as I bought them because I had wasted so much money. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a good idea to do that. It is. That's a good, good New Year's resolution. Good. 
Well, we had our New Year's resolution show. We <laughs> just did. our New Year's show. It was a New Year's show, but uh-huh. we talked we talked a little bit. No, we didn't really. We didn't really talk about that on the show. But now you guys have heard us talk about that. So let's let you listen to what else we talked about for our New Year's broadcast. Let's do it. By the way, Josh. What's up, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, sir. And Happy New Year's to um, Caroline and Austin and Tyler. Good morning and Happy New Year's to all. Good morning. Good morning. 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 Happy New Year. It's that time. Mm -hmm. New Year. It is that time. Mm. Uh So we're going to get right, uh, you know, into the, uh, well, I'm not right into it, but we'll (laughs) We well, at least want you to understand that you know this is gardening inside out, and we're here to talk mm-hmm. about everything horticulturally related, mm-hmm. and particularly as they uh, connect to the year end thought process. So we're you know we're talking the year end here, Josh. It's the yes. New Year's Eve Eve. Eve, Eve I guess Eve. everyone has big New Year's Eve plans. What I do, you, Josh. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start my mushroom in a box kit. That I got from Santa Claus last oh, week. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, I mean, you talk about ringing it in correctly, boy. That's, what are you talking I mean, about? You you hold back now, guy. You're you're talking crazy talk now. Uh, oyster mushrooms on New Year's Eve? Hey man, hey. what are you gonna do? <laughs> but that was cool. Should be nice. That was a neat little gardening gift that I got. From, That's a great. Well, gift. I mean, it's, huh? yeah. it's a great gift. I just thought maybe you might be doing something that had a little more. <laughs> Pizzazz to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's starting mushrooms in a box. That's yeah. so much pizzazz. That's pizzazz. Uh, so what do they? They send you a bag of spores or no, something? No, it's it's it was a a, a box about uh, about that big, and uh, you take the tab off the front, you soak it for twenty four hours, you set it to the side, and ten days later, I can harvest oyster mushrooms. Ten days. Ten, ten days, days later wow. is what it says. All right, you need to document. So what are the, this. You do need what to document this. What are the temperature this? ranges you need to keep that in, Josh? What does it tell you there? Uh, it didn't tell me because I didn't read all that far down on the label. <laughs> You're mm. waiting for tomorrow. Say, yeah, for New I'm Year's waiting Eve to for tomorrow it. to do it. But <laughs> yeah, I would say I would cool. say damp conditions. I would think like damp, moist, kind of darkish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Well, let's let's roll on into okay. it here, guys, and uh, see what is out there in the gardening world. All right. We got a question about wisteria that we're going to start with this morning. It says, hello. Hi, good morning. Hello. My son and daughter-in-law purchased two amethyst fall American wisteria plants from Bates Nursery for me for Christmas. My question is, while I know where we're going to plant it, I won't be able to until spring. How do I care for them and keep them healthy and living until I can plant them in their designated spots? Well. That's a great gift. That is a great gift. Mm -hmm. Plants are awesome gifts. Nobody thinks about it all that much, but they really are. And that's a nice gift because what a beautiful flowering plant. I mean, my God. It's my absolute favorite. I mean, wisteria, when it's in bloom, there's almost nothing better. I don't know. have any. Nothing no, I don't smells either. better. Well, it takes a specific spot. We yes. all know this. Wisteria can be uh, vigorous, to say the least. So <laughs> it can take over a, <laughs> something and just wreck it. So you got to make sure, if since you sounded like you know where you're going to plant it, make sure it's a good sturdy um, you know, trellis system. Um, and then to keep it going till spring, you really don't have to do too much except for just, you know, keep it somewhat moist, but not just soaked. Right. Don't keep it bone, bone dry and just let it be until spring. It's going to crack leaves in the spring and then you can plant it in the spot and it's going to be good. You planted wisteria no. a couple of years ago, didn't you? Uh, oh, you don't want to talk about it. No, no. <laughs> well, yeah, p- perhaps I missed the, uh, the little detail, but is. What is the reason why they, they're not going to be able to plant this? Spring, <laughs> I kind of thought the same thing. Yeah. I mean, if you know where you're going to plant it, if you could plant it, then just go ahead and do they it. They're having for a it. pergola built oh, where oh, that's going to oh, go. Gotcha. Yeah, so they have to wait to okay. plant it. Uh, <laughs> let's advise. Upgrade the, uh, the the framing members of your pergola. Go ahead and do it now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Trust me about this. I, I, Wisteria is among my favorites, and mm-hmm. it smells so good after about – Six or seven years when the blooms finally show up, it does take a minute <laughs> yeah. to bloom. But yeah. uh, but they can put some major weight on a, a structure. absolutely. Yes. And uh, we had ours. We had a, a carport type structure at our home, and it had a wrought iron type of support on it with a gutter pipe, a down pipe that came down it. Um, it destroyed it. Yeah, 
literally <laughs> uh-huh. crushed like took them. it down crushed it no it's just not a joke no yeah. I, 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 because, well it's kind of like to me i think about it as like their vines are yes. like so woody it almost reminds me of like a root system except for above the earth so like right. below the earth a root system can just grab onto anything and just mm-hmm. choke it and that's kind of like what it does except on top of the earth with its stems it just wraps around whatever and just swallows it. It's worth it, but I mean, you just be aware of what's going on mm-hmm. with it. So I mean, anything that's going to be able to, it will crush. It will, it can crush. So wow. it, it's, it's nice stuff. But I, it's gorgeous when when those when those blossoms and those grape like. Oh, there's just nothing like there's it. There's nothing like it. Mm-hmm. Bees go crazy mm-hmm. over them. So mm-hmm. it's a good plant. So you don't have yours anymore. Well. I have to say, with my wisteria, and it's probably because I planted it on the north side of a fence, Mm -hmm. that I haven't seen quite the growth Mm -hmm. that you guys have been talking about. They love sun. They do love sun. And they've gotten to the top of my... I, like, planted them and ran them up a chain link, Mm -hmm. an old chain link fence rail. Mm -hmm. And But they've gotten... Last year, they got killed back a little bit with the freeze. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but they're relatively about the same size. I mean, you know, they stretch probably, I don't know, three to five feet in either direction that I ran them up the pole. So yeah. it'll it'll run this year. Yeah, this year. Yeah, it'll yeah. Go. It seems like it does do that. Like it takes a couple seasons for them to kind of get going. And also, too, what you need to, something you need to know about wisteria. If you have excess nitrogen in your soil, it, they won't bloom very well. So that's a very common huh. problem. Um, so don't really like fertilize high nitrogen for wisteria like in the spring. Like a soil type. Huh? They're like they an acidic be, they soil. They become excessively right? vegetative. They yes, they do. Yeah. They just they just throw leaves. Uh huh. They don't throw blooms. So just know that they take over. My parents had one at the house they bought, and they didn't know what this crazy vine was that was in like four different trees and taking over until three years in it bloomed. But I mean, it was all the way up in the top of some really mature trees. Yeah, in oh, eastern yeah. North Carolina, when it, when they when they all get going, because it took over years and years ago. I mean, it can mm-hmm. get away from yeah. it, and it can be very mm-hmm. invasive, but it's it's worth it. Gosh, they smell so good. They're yeah. so pretty. That's good. Okay, let's talk about something else that's pretty. Okay. Camellias. Mm. All right, Camellia died in the freeze last year. That happened to me, too. So I cut it down to almost flush to the ground, about two inch diameter stump, and then it flushed out from one side of the stump. Do I need to do anything to cut the stump to prevent rot or damage to the new growth down the line? Uh, No, I don't really think you need to do anything. I've got the kind of a similar scenario. I've got three and two out of the three of mine came back from all the stems and they're big and nice and how they should be. But one did not come back except for from the stump like you're Mm. talking about. And I've got this little bitty, or I got a fat stump, and then this little bitty twig that sits above that with like five leaves on it. And that's uh-huh. all I've got. That's what I um, have with all of mine that survived. Uh huh. And that happened to a lot of people, unfortunately. But I don't really think there's anything you ought to do. At the, I mean, you just, that's going to swell. It's going to get bigger this spring, you know, as long as everything goes well with the weather. It's going to have a flush of growth. Typically, when things do that and they have to die back from the ground, you see a, an explosion of growth typically um, in the in the early spring. So, I don't really think there's anything you ought to do at the moment. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it is what it is. It's just part of it. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to rot. No, mine doesn't well, look what, like it. That's pretty much what I did. Sh- yeah, the one thing for sure is that you know, once you have gotten beyond uh, the say the mid part of the spring season, maybe say mid April, and you haven't seen any substantial growth coming up out of it. That's going to be a pretty good cue as to which way you should be thinking that your future is going to be with that mm-hmm. particular plan. It may be that it comes out and does really well and you get a lot more breaks. It may also be that it really just doesn't do a whole lot and you run out of patience and you want to do something different. So uh-huh. either way uh, will work. It's just a question of um, how well it recovers. And last year was tough on a lot of things and – so much so that there's still a lot of well, a great number of things to still deal mm-hmm. with with respect to uh, dead and dying and recovering plants. Mm-hmm. You know what I think, though, too, with camellia is that potentially, like I'm thinking with mine anyway, it's got literally one stem. OK, all that's come back is one single stem that came up. And like I said, it's about five leaves you know, five rungs up, if you will, of leaves. What I'm thinking I might do, so that doesn't just keep going up as a single stem Mm -hmm. and just becoming a one long single stem, I might tip it. So I might go in there and prune the very tip of it. And then whenever you do that, you'll see leaves break lower and you'll see more stems and maybe it'll get to be more of that bushy habit quicker 
um, than if I were to leave that single stem and just have one, you know, single stem that's just a lo- stalky looking, stalky thing, yeah. looking thing. Yeah, I want it to, to get back bushy. So that might be helpful. Mm-hmm. I gotta Ooh. hope there's gonna be some additional basal breaks that are coming out from the ground. Additional. I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I had a lot that came back. Well, probably like four from each plant. From the from the ground. Yeah. That, yeah. It's a great opportunity to have from a patio the very tree base. form. Yep. Oh, that That's cool. sounds glorious. What? A patio tree, tree form, form camellia. Yeah, I love that. I love camellia so much. I was so disappointed when mine died back, but it's amazing. Like everyone's, how many... they're coming back. Yeah, I mean it, they are. <laughs> okay, so we have a question uh, pertaining to a question that we answered last week. We had a question about cutting back succulent. So somebody asked about how their succulent was getting leggy and annoying was the word they used, yes. mm-hmm. and what could they do about it. So we walked them through how you can cut it back. You can take that top cutting, stick it in the dirt, it will root, and then it'll reflush from, um, you know, the base of the plant, like the mother part. Mm -hmm. So someone's asking if they can do that with snake plant. You can, it's not going to have the same results, but you can definitely cut it back. So what I've done with some here in the garden center, if they get uh, a little sickly or sad the way I treat them, and I know Austin did this to one of his recently if yours is getting too tall or if it doesn't look good, you can cut those leaves back pretty much all the way to the dirt. You need to. You, yeah. you need to. To the dirt. And then it will reflush. Now, you can also prop them by taking a top cutting of a leaf that looks healthy. And then with that, you'll want to cut the bottom at an angle, whether it's like a little triangle or just um, one single angle and stick it in water. They take a little while to root, but they will take off eventually. And the reason why you want to cut that angle is so it's not just sitting on the bottom of that vase or jar that you have it growing out of. So propagating is basically taking a part of one plant to make a whole new plant. Mm -hmm. So snake plants are going to take a little bit longer and they need water instead of soil. I mean, you could do it in soil, but they're going to do a little bit better in water. Hey, I've got that right now. Earlier in the show this year, I told y'all my five-year-old Marley cut back my snake plant and we stuck it in all of the On purpose the though, didn't you have her do it? I had she her do it, yeah, she loved it. She was in heaven, she loves to just wreck stuff and it, it was great. <laughs> so she went in there and just You're gonna have nine it. of them at your house yeah, tonight. I know, uh-huh. And, uh, but we took all of those cuttings and I just wanted to put it pretty in a vase, you know, just for a tabletop vase and I put all those in and this was, I don't know, what did I tell you? Probably about a month ago, I checked them. Every single one of them had roots on Oh, wow. yeah. They take a while. They take but a while, they but they did root. And they do better in uh, a dark spot when they're rooting than like, yeah. sticking them on a window. Yeah. See, I didn't have my Yeah. Mine was just literally on the, I think it was just on a side table or something, just as decoration. Yeah. But yeah, I looked at them the other day. They got these crisp orange roots on them, and they're wow. ready to go. They look really good. Oh, yeah. They will take off. I have a friend that has them all over her house, just in... Vases and jars everywhere. Well, they look good. It's just an arrangement. Just like yep. an upright green, almost variegated looking plant, you know, that's just mm. in a very upright. Um, mine's in a very tall, like kind of round container. And like I said, they, they look great and they mm-hmm. rooted. I mean, I could bring all those in and stick them all in the same pot and they'd be great. And everyone could have a snake plant. Yeah. Austin's house. Mm-hmm. Gardening Inside Out is brought to you by Earth Mix Garden Products. Creating regionally sourced, high-quality soil blends and amendments for the sustainable-minded gardener. Fall and winter are great times to plant in the southeast, and Earth Mix can help you with landscape soil conditioner. Mix landscape with your native soil to feed all winter long. Add in mycorrhizal fungi, help your plants get established faster and increase hardiness through the year ahead. Visit earthmix.net for more information and retailers near you. Remember, success begins at the ground level when you use Earth Mix garden products. Mary is a, has a question. I've, I've had some aphids pop up on my newly propagated coleus. I spray with neem oil. Do you think I could water with a systemic? You certainly could, but you probably don't necessarily need to with aphids. Aphids are probably the easiest insect to deal with. Now, finding the, you know, a lot of times people misread what the aphid actually is. A lot of times people think it's that white shell that's still on the plant. That's what they come out of. They more or less molt out of that mm-hmm. shell. So that'll be left behind that a lot of people think those are the actual insects. Well, they're not. The actual insects are either typically green or even red, and they'll be, for the most part, on the backsides of the leaves or in the crevices sometimes of black. whatever, sometimes black. Yep. Uh, there's like a thousand different species of aphid, but for the most part around here, like I said, a lot of times green or red, even black, and popping them, literally just wiping them off is honestly your best method to get rid of aphids without having to use any sprays. 
Yeah, they're easy to get rid of. That's they are. My, that's my favorite pest out of all of the. <laughs> yeah, if we had a terrible a pest, it would uh -huh. be it would be a. And bugs. lady beetles really help a lot. If you have ladybugs available to you, that's a great natural predator, and they will just completely wipe them out. I mean, they they can clean a large plant uh, in a in a matter of hours. So it it really is amazing how many they can eat and how quickly they can eat them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're hungry little bugs oh, and they are. really, really cute. And speaking of uh, propagating coleus, that's an easy one and fun one to do, y'all. Mm -hmm. So just tipping a coleus, if you have an old one that you had or whatever, you want to say, say you planted one in the ground and it got big and beautiful and you loved it. Before frost comes around, just take a few cuttings of that, stick it in a water bottle or just literally just water, and it's going to root like literally within a week or two. Wow. I mean, they're so fast to root. Easiest plant to grow. And just a little fun fact, just so y'all know, whenever you take a cutting from a plant, that cutting is the exact DNA of the mother plant. It is a clone, 100%. So dum, dum, dum. it's the exact same genetics in the plant, and you'll get the exact same results cool. whenever you take cuttings. So that's how we can keep, you know, varieties and cultivars of all these plants that we know and have. We can keep those true to type because we take those cuttings and it's an exact clone of the mother. <laughs> Let's get another question in. We have a question about earth mix. What earth mix is best for bare root rows that I will, will be planting in a container? Okay. Good question. I plant my rows that I have in a container from last year in landscape. That would be what I would use. It's yeah. such a good mix. Yeah. It's my favorite container. It's probably my favorite mix that we make um, in general. But it's got good drainage, but also holds a little bit of water. It's got a ton yep. of nutrients in it, which roses definitely need. Um, it's my favorite. Now, that, that, so, that bare-rooted rose she's got is, is probably a, a graft anyway, too, isn't it? Oh, I'm, so, I'm yeah. sure it is. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely still roses sold that are on their own root, right. which is nice because they've got good hardiness. They don't have to be grafted. But for the most part, almost all your cool roses anyway, all the, all the you know, really flowery ones. The Dolly Partons and the... Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, the Marilyn and, Monroe's and, 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 and the and, JFK's and, and, that are flirting across the garden. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, all of those that are cool. Um, yeah, great, great mix. My, you know, funny enough, my rose right now, it's a Chihuly rose. It's a, it's a multicolored rose. Chihuly? Chihuly is the name Chihuly. of it. It's a multicolored rose that's beautiful. It still has leaves on it right now. It hasn't even right. shed one of its leaves. But the leaves are like maroonish or burgundy-ish, if you will. So wow. that's kind of weird, but it's still up, still doing well. I love that rose. <laughs> I know you do. You just oh, love roses. I do. I do. They you, annoy me. You do. I, I, it's a love-hate. Yeah, it's it definitely a love hate. If you're should, in Middle Tennessee, you know what I'm talking about. That's uh -huh. true. Y'all should come out to the nursery when we get our big rose shipment in, in the spring. We should just live stream it so you guys. Oh, can we see should. Yeah, Austin's I'll do that reaction. This year. Let's put a little camera right in front of his face so you can see when that <laughs> truck pulls uh -huh. in. Mm -hmm. And then as those roses start to get unloaded from that truck, I mean, mm -hmm. it's amazing. It's exciting for everyone, but for Austin. It's a big day. Just it's a, a, it's we a, can just it's get a, a GoPro to put it on top of his head uh -huh. so we can see his every move. Oh, and I will oh. show you every rose, the amount of the petal count, the color, the fragrance, uh -huh. all of it. And I'll be right there with Pedro. Probably some, Pedro do the roses. <laughs> some Pedro sassy loves remarks rose day too. along the way, too. What? Some sassy remarks along the way, Maybe. too. Maybe. Mm. A little bit of sass, yeah. Well, I always come home bloody that day because the roses will get you. Okay. <laughs> Whenever you're unloading like a thousand, <laughs> you're going to get a thorn. They bite. You they do. And when they really hit you, they hit you. And it sticks with you. It's like they give you a little stick of poison. A little oh, rose poison. Make you say yeah. all They're making you remember. Shucks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shucks. But it is an exciting day. It's gorgeous once they get set on a lot. It's a sea of blooms and fragrance. Fragrance. Yes. It's incredible. And we'll Austin's usually you know standing in the middle of it, just mm -hmm. taking it all in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we have a question about watering trees, which we get a lot, but it, it's a great question. I mean, there's so much to know about watering. We talk about it all the time here at the nursery, how that's probably one of the hardest things to actually figure out, whether it's indoor or outdoor. Definitely. Should I be watering my trees planted in mid-October once the temperatures drop to the 20s and 30s? No. To me, no. I mean, I don't, I don't care what you really planted in October, especially a deciduous. If it's deciduous and it's lost its leaves, definitely no. Yeah. And we're getting into that point where we get pretty wet, typically, David. Isn't, been, isn't our wettest month usually around February or so, roughly, I feel like? Well, it's, it's coming up on But the one thing that is important for, for people to keep in mind is that if there are – the exception to that would be something that's newly planted, and there's no reason to not plant this time of year. So if you're going to plant a tree right now, 
it's really important to you know be mindful of watering in it thoroughly. That initial watering is is very the important. first one, yeah. But this one was back and then. That settles all the pockets of air out of it and gets it all good for the winter. Uh, but if you planted it, just like uh, Austin said, if you planted it in October. October and you did all that, it's almost, unless we had a severe drought conditions, and we, we're not seeing that right now. No. It shouldn't it's be It's actually necessary. been moist for it's the been pretty good three or four weeks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's Until been pretty good. you start getting foliage coming up and pushing out there, do you have to really be concerned about it because that's when the uptake of water begins mm -hmm. yeah typically if you're planting a tree like or any shrubs really in october you're going to not do much through the whole winter time but then come next summertime just keep an eye out mm -hmm. you know it gets to be august and we go a month without rain or something like that then that's the time to probably you're probably going to have to water the cycle i'm putting them yeah. in my yard i'd put them on the cycle to go around at least once a week or something like yeah that. i mean at least something now yeah. they've you know they've established pretty well at that yeah. point a root system anyway um so it's probably not that big of a deal but some things that are you know water hungry a little bit then or the water thirsty babies i should don't want say. them to dry out either. yeah exactly yeah. so the next other summer, one exception eye. might be if it is a container grown uh, or container planted thing like a japanese maple in a container or anything else that you might have in a container if you're having and this is really when the temperatures are down and the from mid-teens and below you need to really soak them thoroughly prior to the freezing conditions and i know that doesn't make sense you know won't that water freeze yes but the water provides insulation to the soil so that's why you do it at that point but other than those kind of conditions when uh, they we're going to have a really hard freeze uh it's not necessary you know they'll be fine throughout the remainder of the winter there's nothing in the forecast that's out there immediately ahead of us that would indicate anything otherwise mm -hmm. all right and let's shopping. talk a little bit about yeah. soy oh. how do you correct uh for too much phosphorus in your soil yes i have been throwing fertilizer down for years without a True. soil test now that i had a test i guess i will spend years correcting it <laughs> and then it says get a soil test people mm -hmm. and p and k right yeah, NPK, okay. yep. yeah, and if you keep adding fertilizer year after year, you're going to, you know, nitrogen a lot of times gets depleted a lot quicker than phosphorus does, so right. phosphorus will stick in the soil. We have a lot of phosphorus naturally in our soil, typically, so you don't usually have to add all that much. So the first key is stop throwing Putting. fertilizer at it that has a middle number that has any percentage at all, okay? So it's, like Josh just said, NPK, the P is the phosphorus. No more of that middle number. We don't want to add any of that. And really, the best thing I could kind of find when talking about or looking around to try to finish this or figure this out was to grow plants. Yes. It literally said that. Like, when I was reading about it and got pretty deep off into some stuff, it, just growing more plants there and keep doing that. And then as the years go on, you will get, you know, you'll Maybe sow you will some grass regulate. Sow I some, guess you could. That yeah. doesn't go very deep. Right. It's the only thing right. about grass. But plants right. that, you know, high flowering plants, you know, or heavy rooting right. plants, they right. really use phosphorus a lot. So using maybe, you know, heavy flowering plants in that area might be helpful to try to get that soil back kind of regulated. Yeah, I don't know. I've ever heard anybody having this problem previously. I'm sure that they have, or maybe they just didn't know it, but... Mm -hmm. uh, to have the, the the known problem of having an excessive amount of phosphate is a bit unusual. Right. So, yeah. Uh, but yes, you need to grow that phosphate out of the soil. It does not leach like nitrogen does, it, or gas off like nitrogen well, does. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering where we got our soil test. You know, probably the ag center. Yeah, maybe the ag center. Yeah, Ellington ag center will test your soil, just so you know, y'all yeah. know that. Yeah, and that there's no charge for that either. No, not that I know of. So I, I I'm going to go ahead and get another one. You know, I, I think just to, just to confirm the the results of it. I think you can also go through your local co-op. I'm pretty sure my father-in-law gets his garden right. soil tested every single year, and I'm pretty sure it's through the co-op. And they give him this, you know, a guaranteed analysis of, of right. what his soil has in it, pH-wise, all the nutrient levels, if he's depleted in lime, all that good stuff. And really, really mm -hmm. great to start with that uh, before you ever start your veggie garden or really right. any, any bed, if you right. you know.
Additional support for Gardening Inside Out is brought to you by Bates Nursery and Garden Center, a third generation nursery located in Nashville, Tennessee and 20 time recipient for Nashville's best garden center, offering the widest selection of new arrivals for fall like specimen conifers, Japanese maples and pansies in nearly every color. Open year round, minutes from the heart of Nashville in beautiful Whites Creek, Tennessee. Browse their selection online anytime at BatesNursery.com. Bates Nursery and Garden Center, beautifying Nashville since 1932. Are mealybugs best removed by hand and alcohol, too? That was Mary's follow-up to her other pest question. If it's not bad, I say yes. I take Q-tips to get mealybugs off, especially if they've jumped from one plant to another and you find it right before um, the infestation takes over. you ever seen a mealybug jump? I've never <laughs> seen one jump. Oh, I'd be scared <laughs> if I saw that. Um, but that's how I usually start treatment for them. Uh, mealybugs are one of my least favorite yes. things to get on the plant, so... They're annoying. They're so they're so annoying. They're a lot harder to get rid of than aphids, and that is something that you can use a systemic for if it does get out of hand. Um, I've used there's a granular systemic. I can't remember off the top of my head what exactly the ingredient is that I use for house plants when I get it. It does take some time. It can take like up to like a month or month and a half for it to really treat it. But once the plant absorbs it, it does work um, to kill everything off. So if it's bad, I suggest doing that as your last resort. Or you could go a step further and just do neem oil and wipe those leaves down. Get into the crevices, especially if it's like a fiddle leaf fig, because they Oof. can really get in there. Mm -hmm. And they are not fun to treat. Are you talking about that little systemic house plant? Yeah, it's a granular way, way that you up, yeah. put in the it's, soil and then mix it in. A metaclopard. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's active, yeah. yeah. And that's like the most stout chemical in the plant. And I'll use acephate <laughs> on houseplants when it's warm and they're outside. You to said treat acetate? Them. Acephate. Acephate. Yeah. acephate. Okay. Mm -hmm. That to me do works better. Do not use acetate on any <laughs> living plant. No, oh. do not do that. Okay. Um, that to me works a little bit better. It seems to be stouter, works quicker. But again, I only use it when I can put my plants outside mm -hmm. and treat it. And that is my last resort. So before I throw the plant away, if it means a lot to me, then I will go the systemic route. But I usually try to do natural treatments before I have to do that. Acephate stinks really well. It's terrible. So take it outside Awful. before you treat that. Mm -hmm. It's commonly sold as a, uh, randomly enough, as a fire ant killer. They use oh, yeah, you were telling me that, that not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it smells horrible. They can't stand the smell, so yeah, they just that's keep what going it is. in. Yeah, yeah, they head back south. They run away. Uh-huh. Yep. All right. What's next? Kim Fox asks, does a f does Father Gilla do well in Robertson County? I have clay soil and no shade in the front yard. Oh, yeah. Father Gilla is a, is a nice native around here, so it's used mm -hmm. to our soils. So Robertson County ain't no different than Cheatham or Davidson. I mean, it's, no, it's, it's fine out there. Um, the and my recommendation might be an issue though. And I mean, you know, I'm okay with Father Gila and, and more. We used to keep Father Gila out on the lot, and it would be fine. Like it now, it's a little bit water. Right. It's a little bit thirsty of a plant. So if it's out in the you know full sun, is that the common name? Because I'm not familiar. That is a common. Okay. Uh, well, no, witch alder, witch alder is a common okay. name. Right. Yeah, Mainly seems, grown. Doesn't seem common at all. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a, a you know not a lot of people know about that plant. It's really right. prized for its fall color. I mean it's that is gorgeous. stunning. It's got um, good blooms too. It's got uh -huh. great blooms. Yeah. It's actually a, it's an underused plant. It should be used more in the landscape. It gets fairly large, um, but it, out in, in uh, where'd she say Robertson County? Yeah, it'll live out there. You might have to amend your soil a little bit if it's like a super right. clay spot. Uh, but like I said, it's tolerant of our soils. It's a native around here, so stick it out there. Like I said, in the full sun, you might have to water it a little bit more to get it kind of going, but it should do just fine. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Jane Gibbs, uh, thanks for watching. Advisable hey, to protect to protect recently planted blueberry bushes with some frost cloth when temps dip below 32? No. Dang. Don't do it. No. Your blueberry's fine. Dang. It loves 32. They're all colored up right it now. Mm -hmm. They live in great. Maine for yeah. pity's sake. Blueberries yeah. are they great. Yes. They are very cold hardy. So yes. I had one in a pot don't... on my driveway, and it did just fine in the December freeze. Didn't take oh, a yeah. hit at all. So. No. That shows how hardy they are. Oh, the music. Oh. Tyler. Tyler. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're not ready to be done. We were counting down. Too bad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You better Christ. get what you need to say out. Yeah, I've okay. got enough out. Well, you know, we do need to say Happy New Year to everyone. We really want to thank you for uh, taking a little bit of mm -hmm. your day and uh, sharing that with us. And we really invite you in as we roll into 2024. 
and be we'll safe. come help you along the gardening path uh, right here on Gardening Inside Out. And of course, Josh, we've David. been doing this together for a while. Uh huh. So don't know, do I think we're just do, yeah, keep it don't do out crazy stuff. Let yeah, go out there so you can join us next Saturday morning. I mean, go home. Grow oyster mushrooms out of the box. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go out and go, go crazy so, uh-huh. so you can be with us. Uh, thank you, David Bates. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to Caroline. Happy New Year to Austin and Happy Tyler. New Happy, Happy, New Happy New Year, Year to Year. all the viewers. We thank you for being with us. We'll see you next Saturday morning right here from Bates Nursery and Garden Center for Gardening Inside Out. Thank you for tuning into the Gardening Inside Out podcast. If you're looking for more information or more from your hosts, don't forget that we have a live Saturday morning broadcast, 8 a.m. Central Time, on YouTube and Facebook. You can also follow us on our Instagram channel, that's at symbol gardening inside out, for more posts, reels, and in-depth dives to topics and things we've discussed on the show. If our content resonates with you, consider giving us a follow, like, and subscription on all of our social media pages. See you next time.